Why computing in molecular gradually? You see, I did a nice animation. Sorry. I tried to make something different. Why we will do computing in molecular biology? Um, well, okay, you, we have, a, a, I, I want to talk about the, the three W's and one H, no? Well, that's right, the N and key. Um, starting with who? Well, some of you know me, but not necessarily everybody knows me. Who? Who is this person? Who is talking? Well, my name is Andres Aravena. You, you, you see in the, in the Zoom, you see my long name. You know, uh, I am from, from Chile, which is a Latin American country. And in Latin American tradition, people have long names and short names. Uh, you have, I mean, the king of Spain has like 10 names. Uh, the more important you are, the more names you have. Okay. Uh, but for real life, we, you don't use all the names, you choose the, the short one. So uh, for a practical thing, my name is Andres Aravena. As you know, I'm professor here at the molecular biology department, uh, but I'm not a biologist, I'm a mathematical engineer. Uh, I studied in Chile, in the University of Chile, the, the biggest, best one. And I did uh, two PhD, one in France, one in Chile, one in informatics, technically bioinformatics and uh, mathematical modeling. And uh, as you see, I'm not a biologist, but uh, I'm a mathematician, but I can speak biologist. Then, um, how will we do this course? As everybody knows, this is a new way of doing things. So uh, we have to find some idea. First point to know, especially if you are doing this for the second time, this is a different course. Uh, this is not the same course that I teach the years before. Why? Because I was teaching, uh, uh, the course that I was teaching is a course that I evolved during five years. And in five years, things change. And if I keep teaching you, uh, I am not uh, teaching you the correct thing. Uh, this is uh, an updated version. So if you are doing a second time, you have to pay attention to the, the classes are different, the plots are different, material is different, okay? So if you are doing the first time, good for you. Uh, we will do a lot of homework. Uh, this is super important because uh, we, if, since we are not in a physical place, it's much easier for everybody to get distracted. Uh, and, uh, and we want really to, to, to learn and learning is doing, not looking, okay? We will give um, homework during the semester uh, as, as much as we can do. And it's important, super important that everybody must do it. Uh, I don't mean that you have to do it correctly, uh, but you have to do it and deliver on time. The most important thing is that you deliver on time. Uh, and the second important thing is that you do it right. But the most important thing is doing it on time. It should be personal. Now, personal in the sense that, uh, yeah, classes are recorded. Um, uh, okay, uh, the most important thing about the homework is that, uh, that, that you, you write the answer with your own hands. Uh, it's a physical thing, you, you must use your hands and send it personally because it's part of training for the exam and it's essentially what uh, training for, for doing, for, for learning. Uh, if you don't do it with your hand, you will not learn what you have to learn. Now, if, uh, if you want, you can talk. I'm, in fact, I recommend you that you talk with people, that the, the ideas can be developed, uh, I mean, for the, not for the exam, but for the homework. You have your friends, you talk with your friends, you discuss with your friends, you work together, but everybody should answer individual, okay? Personally. What else? Um, the answers, well, probably we will have the system, but I'm not sure how the system work. And we had some problems uh, in previous, uh, the, the last semester we have some problem because in the system, they expect that you send a kind of Word files and here we are doing something different. So the system was not working for our kind of file. 
I take answers at this email address, which is Andres. And there is this plus CMB that is important, that is indicating that it's an answer to computing in molecular biology. Okay. You can also, if, if, if possible, you upload them to the system, but that not always work. Uh, I am mostly checking the email. Okay. Always answer, especially if you did it wrong. I mean, if you, if you feel that it's incomplete, because that will help me to understand what is missing, what is the part that people don't understand. And also because uh, what we want to teach you here is not only to use a computer, we want to teach you to be a professional. And one important part of being a professional is that you deliver on time always. Being on time is super, super important. Like for example, this class has to be teached now. I cannot tell you, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish the class, let's do it. I cannot do that. So my class will not be perfect. Uh, believe me, I've been working this class for two months and I still not finish it, but they will be on time. And uh, I, it's part of the feedback, okay? If you have any questions, don't send to that email because I don't check that. Uh, that that uh, this email address is uh, connected to an automatic system that processes the answer, but I don't see. If you ask questions, I will not see them. If you have questions, you have to ask them in the forum. We have a forum for the course, a Google group, uh, and you will send your question there. Now, for doing this, you must first register to the forum. We will do this today. Later, we will do this registration. And I will show you how. That forum, uh, the link for registering and to see the forum is found in the course homepage. We have a homepage for the course that uh, I will show you in a, in a minute. We will do all the registering after this class, okay? The course, this is the link to the forum. Uh, it's different from previous years. Uh, I have a new system. There you will find all the slides, all the videos, all the material. That is the place that I put everything. I will also upload to the official uh, system, but uh, I'm not sure if I will be able to upload everything. So essentially the point is this. The system of the university is something that we are just learning, you and me. My system I've been using for four, five years. So I know it very well and I know how it works. So I will use both, okay? But I know that my system works. What else? Um, now, the way we do usually in, at the start of every class, of every, no, every semester, of every course, we do a survey asking people uh, something about uh, you. And it's super important for, for several reasons. First, because it, uh, it, it triggers you some ideas. You, you will have an idea, what is this course about? What are the important things? Uh, it, it will prepare you better to understand the course. Uh, it will trigger questions in your mind that will be hopefully solved during the semester. Second, I am asking you data like how much you weight or what is your size, things like that that uh, we will use later for data. Uh, we will collect data from the group. So when we do that analysis, will be from your own data, okay? Well, this year we also have a nice, interesting set of data that is uh, COVID data. Uh, and I think most people is also interesting in COVID. So our main source of data for this semester will be COVID and you, okay? so. The survey will, will also fill it later, but it's super important that everybody do. And there is another point. If you do uh, this survey before, I am asking you to do it again. I always ask to do it again because I want to see how your thinking change. There are questions about your opinion. I want to see if you change your mind. And I want to also want to see if you if you were uh, honest when you measure your your uh, hand and the thing that uh, because some people uh, don't take it seriously and put uh, things that are wrong well if i ask the second time and they something different then they are not serious so it's also a way to see who is uh, serious being professional so uh, 
if you see the calendar, we have two classes every Monday. That is in general a bad idea uh, because we need to spend some time between classes, you know? Uh, it is uh, very hard to process everything in one day. So we will try to handle that somehow. But for the official accounting of attendance, what we are going to do is this. I'm going to uh, ask you to fill the survey or something like that. We will have this kind of survey every week, or at least there may be one question, like what is your email or something like that, that you have to fill when I, when I show to you. I will open in a specific time and you have to write your uh, email address, your student number or something. Uh, and that uh, will be the attendance. And I will do it twice every uh, day, every, every class. One in the morning and one uh, at, at the finish of the class to, to see if you are attending in both classes because otherwise people kind of come to the first part and then they go away or they arrive late. So uh, one at the very beginning and one at the very end. Okay, why? Do you have any questions before we go to the why? No questions. No. There, there is something else that I, I didn't put in the slides or maybe I put it somewhere, but the, I, I, my, my plan is this. Uh, all people who work in, in teaching know that you uh, must teach in short runs, in, in short periods, several times. So four hours in one day is very bad. The best will be one hour in four different days. Well, maybe that is uh, also tiring. So my trade-off usually is two hours on Monday and two hours on Friday or something like that. Try to separate. Now, it will be hard to coordinate now. And, and I, I've been trying to convince the system that uh, four hours of classes is bad. So how, how I want to solve this? If everything goes right, I will make a video of every class before the class. So today, later, or maybe tomorrow, I will upload the video of next class. So instead of spending this time looking at me in the screen, you will go to YouTube or somewhere and you will see the class and you have to see the class before. Uh, you come to the class after seeing the video and we will use the time more efficiently uh, answering your questions and doing exercise. Uh, I mean, uh, and the point is that if they're online, you, you watch them whenever you want, just before the class. Uh, you watch them today, tomorrow, on the morning. Uh, I don't know if you if you... You can download to your telephone, maybe. I don't know. So uh, I hope it will give you freedom and will give you more time to, to process. Because there is a point of time between I tell you something and you are able to process it, there is some time that uh, passes. Uh, it's usually hard to use a new concept that you just uh, listen the first time. Usually you need to listen, you need to see it, and you need to sleep. Uh, you need to go to, to, to process. You know, you know when, we, when we sleep in the night, the brain processes the information. So it is important that we let some time pass between the presenting on the, on the class and using of the class. That way, I hope that we will use the time more efficiently. And if it, that uh, works, we can even make this class shorter. So today we are recording, but uh, well, we will record always any, anyway. But in general, we, what we will do is uh, give the class before the class. Okay. Question now? Say no, no question. Say something. I have uh, a question. Okay. Yeah, there is a button, raise your hand, you know? There is a raise hand button. Well, go ahead. Can. Hi. Uh, did you learn programming or anything like R or uh, yeah. Python? 
uh, the, the, we use R in this course? Essentially, because it's, it's a very good question. And in fact, I'm delaying it a little bit because it's not the essential thing. We want to teach you to think with data. Uh, and for that, we need a language, but the language is not the important part. The important part is thinking. Now, uh, people in, in molecular biology use Python and R for different things. Uh, in my opinion, R is easy to start. Uh, you, it, uh, you can start very easily and then uh, uh, you can do a lot of things. Python is harder to start, but you can do more things. So in my opinion, uh, Python should be for, for everybody. And if you do a master, you should get Python in the, so, sorry, I say R, R for everybody and Python in the master. Now, um, well, depending on how we go, we are not going to uh, see a lot of programming. We, we do mostly data handling. Maybe, maybe I put in a slide later, uh, but the goal of this course is that you should be able to use the computer to write a paper with all the plots and all the tables and basic data analysis, okay? The next course is programming. So computing in molecular biology one is, a, I give you data and you can write a paper and computing two is like, a, I give you a, a theory and you make a program to simulate that or uh, you, you create your own data. Let's say you do uh, advanced analysis. Uh, this uh, course is how to write a paper. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Any other question? No, it's kind of closer. Who else? Um, there's a button, a raise hand. Why? Why we teach computing in molecular biology then? Ah, before. Before why we teach. Why you are here? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now is the time to talk. Now is the time to talk. Why you are here? Okay, I will start with Atakan, it is kind of silently there, it is an introduce. Some people introducing themselves, I will... Atakan. Hi. Hi. Why are you here? Uh, as a biologist, I have to handle with big data. Okay. Maybe. So I have to learn some programming or something like that. Okay, good, good answer. Good, good, good. Good. Uh, uh, that is probably the, the good reason uh, is uh, that we need to use computers in molecular biology. And um, part of the goal of this course is uh, realize that that is important, that uh, you cannot really do molecular biology without do using uh, a computer. What else? Anybody got any other reason for being here? Hi. Okay, hello. Uh, I think that computer is the future, so we should learn it to okay. be scientists of the future. I will, okay. Because of that, I'm learning this class. Okay. Sorry, what did you say the last? Sorry? What was the last part of your uh, answer? Computer, uh, is the, uh, computer of the future, that you say first. And computer, then you went away. Computer will be more important in future, so we should learn it. To yeah. Be, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I partially agree. I think that computers are important today, yeah. not in the future. Uh, the future, the future started 20 years ago. You know, the future is the year 2000. Uh, we are in the future. We live in the future. Okay. Any other answer? Uh, teacher, I'm typed on chat. Can ah, okay. Good, good, good. Uh, you can talk. You have microphone. Okay, I already doing something in Python, teacher. Uh, uh, what is your answer? Ah, here. Uh, yeah, I see. Read my answer. My answer is see. Okay, but the microphone is better, Ulash. Uh, anyway, but uh, it's, it's better essentially because I have too many screens and, 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 and something. Ah, okay. Well, part of the trick of this course is to help you learn English. Uh, you know, people cannot do science 
in, only, in any other language than English. Uh, the only language, for good or bad, I'm not saying that it's a good language, but the truth of life is that uh, English is the language of science. Mm -hmm. The most spoken language in the world is Chinese. So if you don't learn English, you should learn Chinese. The second most spoken language in the world is Spanish, which I speak from my country. Uh, but English is the most spoken language in science. I mean, the only. Uh, before, people spoke in Russian, not anymore. People spoke in German, not anymore. Uh, in Latin, hmm, was the old language of science. 1,000 years ago, it was Arab. But today, the universal language is English. So it is super important that you practice your English. And uh, we are going to also uh, help you doing that. Uh, uh, you, you will have to write. In this course, you have to write in English. OK? Because practice makes perfect. OK, you are already doing something in Python. Um, OK, um, good. Uh, I mean, the philosophy between Python and R are the same. Uh, the, the way of looking at the world is the same. The difference are mostly in the technical aspect, the details, kind of decoration. Okay, the structure is the same, the decoration is different. I mean, it's like, it's different cars. One is a Mercedes, the other is a Volkswagen, let's say. Uh, one is more expensive, more cheap, but they are both the same idea. Uh, you have wheels, you have, uh, uh, I don't know, pedals and things. So if you know how to handle a Volkswagen, you will handle a Mercedes, okay? That is the difference between Python and R. It's just what kind of car. And we want to teach you how to drive any car. For teaching you to drive any car, we're going to use this, I don't know, Toyota, which is uh, R. But we are not teaching you R. We are teaching you how to do, how to solve, how to understand data. Okay? That is what we are teaching you. And that includes some English. And by the way, you realize that English is not my main language. Uh, I have a lot of accent. So if you don't understand me, it's my fault. OK? But if you don't ask me, it's your fault. So uh, if you don't understand, ask. OK, why? Last point. There is, a, there is a point that you are not connecting. Because you are doing something with Python, and computers are super important. But you can do other things. I mean, why you are here in this class? Why are you not, I don't know, uh, reading something online or, or, or uh, reading a book or, or uh, I don't know, doing something else? You may be working in a company, for example. Away, uh, if you are in this class, you are not working. If you are not working, you are losing money. Uh, why are you losing money being here now? Okay, I will let you think about that and we can talk about it later. But think that uh, every minute that you spend here is a minute that you don't uh, work for money. So you are losing money being here. Why you are losing money? Better think now than later. Okay, second why. Why would you use computers in molecular biology and genetics? Um, Basically, I, I like to say, maybe some of you already got this, computers are essentially rule changers. Uh, the world uh, changes when computers become everywhere. Initially, computers were solved to, to, were created to solve mathematical problems. That was, I don't know, 70 years ago. Uh, then uh, people realized that they can use to handle databases. So, for example, the first companies to have this handle, for example, the airline companies, to have all the reservation, all the system. Airline companies had a big, big uh, uh, development when they start using computers for handling the clients, you know, the reservation. Imagine if you have, uh, uh, let's say, Turkish Airlines and you have uh, offices in, in uh, every city in Turkey, 
on every major airport, how you coordinate, how you know who is going to be in a given plane. That problem was very hard to solve before computers. And they solved it in the 50s. So 60 years ago. Then uh, 70 years ago. No, let's say 60 years ago. Then um, in the 70s, computers started to be very cheap. Uh, in the 50s and 60s, computers were very expensive and you have essentially one computer for every city. Uh, if, if you are a very powerful university, you have one computer in the university. And it was talking of millions of dollars. Uh, so for example, in my country, the first computer arrived in the late 60s and was one computer for all the country. I think in Turkey it was similar in Turkey. So, uh, but in the 70s, they become cheaper and cheaper and you, people start to, to have them at home, at least in the office, you know. In the 70s, you have to, you started to see that some department got a computer and then some professor got a computer. And in the 80s, like people start having computer at the home. And in the 90s, uh, they become communication tools. When in, in, uh, in the 90s was when internet become something. Uh, internet technically started in the 70s, but become really, really important in, in the 90s. So 30 years ago, when computers connected to the network and then become this that we can use to talk today. Uh, before that, computer essentially tell you the thing that you tell before. Uh, before internet, the computer was kind of a storage of information. You put information inside and you can then take it back. With the internet, the computer can tell you something that you didn't know before. And that's a really game changer. And with this, they transform how society works. How they transform the society in a huge impact. And uh, including in society, transforming the, the way we do science. And that is why we, we use computers, because science, like everybody in society, is doing with computers. So, <clears throat> for example, today, banks don't have money. They don't handle money. What they handle is data about your money. Uh, you don't go you, uh, to the ATM, to the guichet. You, you don't meet people usually. You go to an ATM. And an ATM, as you probably realize, is just a computer with some other stuff. But are essentially computers, robots, if you like. So this uh, gentleman here uh, is jobless now. Or maybe they are much less people. <clears throat> What else? Um, so uh, let's say banks don't handle money. Uh, they don't have money. They have information about money. And uh, at the end, what you realize is that information about money is more important than the money. Uh, I mean, you probably use a credit card or something like that. And you have a card for the, for the uh, Metro card. Uh, you don't carry money. You carry information. Movies, cinema. Every movie that you have seen in your life was made with a computer at some part. In old time, people draw Mickey Mouse and they use a photographic uh, with a chemical reaction. Nobody does that. All movies are made with computers. Uh, the cameras are computers, edition is with computers, and uh, photographic processes with the computer, the lighting and the texture. And eventually you have movies like the Toy Story that is completely made with computers. You don't need to have people. But even the most simple movie, I mean, come on, if you see a movie, you see it in YouTube, no? Or something like that. So uh, you cannot have a cinema without computers. Factories, they used to have a lot of people working. No, they don't have people. A factory like the one that you see here in the right side, is uh, probably having 10 people, 15 people, but uh, they don't work in the cars, they work in the robots. Uh, people working in the factory replace robots, not cars. So factories today are big robots. Jobs that used to be manual are not uh, made uh, by computers. 
for example, you, you know this. You know what is this, no? What are these people here? What are they doing? Say something. Um, hi. Hi. I think they are uh, directing calls, like yeah. central. Exactly. Exactly. They are telephone operators. Right? Yes. That were very common in, in the start of uh, computing telephone. I, I, to be honest, I, 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 I saw this when I was younger than you. I saw this working in small towns. But yes, telephone operators. Um, and what these, uh, these people do today? Nothing. They are no more telephone operators because they were replaced by computers. Uh, many jobs are being replaced by computers. So the basic question is, will a computer replace you? If your work is um, hand pipetting, uh, there is a robot that can pipet faster and cheaper and uh, more efficient. Well, it's not necessarily cheaper, you know, because computers have a cost, robots have a cost that you pay one time. So, so if you if you work in a big uh, laboratory, the laboratory maybe will buy a, a robot and the robot will work forever, night and day, 24-7. Uh, uh, it will not only work in, in, in uh, nine to six, it will work uh, 24 hours, uh, Monday to Sunday. And therefore, in the long term, uh, robots are cheaper. And if you want to compete with a robot, you have two options. Either do the same job as the robot cheaper, meaning that you don't get paid, meaning that essentially you work for free, or you do something that the robot cannot do. And that's the basic point of this course. How to make the robot work for you and not you work for the robot. If you only do pipetting, you will be replaced by a robot the same way that the telephone operators were replaced. Let's take a look at this uh, listing that is kind of recent. It's the recent that I found them and you have the source here. No, you, you can check it uh, if there is wrong. This is the 12 top uh, biggest companies in the world. The, Number one, eight and nine are uh, not based on computers. Microsoft makes software. Apple makes software and hardware. And then Alphabet is Google. They make software. Facebook make Google. So these uh, five companies, the richest in the world, only do software. Well, some also do hardware, but the computing. Amazon, you may know Amazon, they do retail, let's say they sell stuff, but they do it online. Amazon, uh, the basic reason why Amazon is uh, one of the biggest company and the owner of Amazon is the richest man in the world is because they did software to do the same thing that Migros was doing. So instead of, uh, I mean, instead of selling stuff in the corner, they they made an online uh, website and they started selling books and now they sell everything and they have office everywhere including turkey so for example if i want to buy something i can connect to the amazon web page and uh, they deliver uh, here so everybody else like i don't know migros has to compete with amazon but the um, point is amazon is essentially a software company okay well they have a hardware, but but they essentially um, they cannot be as rich as they are without computers. Alibaba number seven is the Chinese version of Amazon, so again is software. Walmart is uh, the biggest supermarket in the world, and they are essentially the biggest computer owners in the world. They the trick of Walmart, the, the business of a supermarket, even if they are not online even if they are work like Migros or, or Macro Center or whatever, their business is to know what are people buying, what uh, to have in every supermarket, what is being sold. So every time you, you buy something, uh, the, the post, the, the casa, uh, the counter, 
register what are you buying, when are you buying. You probably have a fidelity card, like the something that give you points. The, I don't know what is the name, but the, some kind of fidelity card. Uh, and they know what are you buying, when are you buying, and what are you going to buy the next time. So that way they buy just in time. Uh, these companies don't, don't waste a lot of money to have stock just in case. These companies have a philosophy of just in time. And that is something that you can only do with computers. So if you are an old company, I mean, for example, there used to be uh, many bookstores. But with uh, uh, Amazon, most of them disappeared. Now, Visa, number 11 Visa, the credit card company, I don't need to explain you that credit cards essentially handling information. What they do, they know when you buy something, who you, and they move information. That is their business. Johnson & Johnson is a pharmaceutical company and they have many, many things, but pharmaceutical companies are also one of the biggest users of computers. If you, if you want to develop, develop a new drug, you are going to use a lot, a lot, a lot of computers, a lot. I mean, really huge. I mean, they are different things. For example, Walmart and, and uh, Amazon and even Facebook, they have big uh, databases. They have a lot of storage. Johnson & Johnson, they don't have so much data, but they do a lot of mathematical simulation. Uh, they, a lot, a, a lot of computing. Uh, so there are these two aspects. We are going to talk about them a little later, okay? So computers, are everywhere. Moreover, you probably use several computers in your everyday. You have a cell phone that are, um, all smartphones are computers. You have a TV, all TVs today are computers. If you use uh, Digiturk, you have a computer for Digiturk. Many microwave ovens have a computer inside, many washing machines, or this washing machine have a computer to control them. If you have a car, the car is handled by a computer. If you, instead of a car, you take the metro, the metro is handled by a computer. And you probably, some of you have a computer at home, a notebook or a desktop computer. That is what people are usually think as a computer. So <clears throat> what I want to say here is, we usually think that the notebook is the computer, the thing that you have the keyboard. But you have computers everywhere that are kind of transparent to you. You don't see them as a computer, but they are computer. Your TV is a computer. And most importantly, your cell phone is a computer. So computers are really everywhere. And it's important that you understand what they are and how they interact with you. Uh, OK, this, this question is kind of obvious now, but um, I want to get to a point. You probably have a computer at home. Uh, some of you are using your cell phone, but if you don't have a computer at home, it will be a problem now because uh, the homework will, you, you need to find a computer to do the homework. Okay, this is a computer class. And unfortunately, you need to, to use a computer. Try to find someone, try to find a friend or a neighbor or something. And uh, probably, I mean, I know that they are not so cheap and, and things are uh, expensive, but to be honest, uh, it will be an investment if, if, if you, one day you need to write your final project and one day you ha will ha apply for a scholarship or will apply for a job, you will write your CV. It is probably a good business to have a computer at home. <clears throat> what do you do with your computer? One by one. Game coding. Ah, coding. Ah, interesting. Okay, game coding is better. What do you do with your computer, Khan? Khan is the only uh, people. Uh, I am using it for watching movies. Okay. Uh, and learning programming and studying for lessons. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, more or less what people do. And uh, game game coding is a little more interesting than uh, uh, Ula should say. Uh, if um, you... Uh, do what can say essentially where you were consumers uh, many people say that like uh, not many people but some people say that they uh, like playing games uh, 
Um, I stopped playing games like 30 years ago. I spent too much time uh, playing games and uh, game calling is better than playing games. Uh, I confess that sometimes I spend too much time. I am not uh, uh, so much using Facebook, but I, in all time I spend too much time in Facebook. Maybe you also spend a lot of time in Facebook. Uh, and yeah, and watching videos. I, I also, I also say I have YouTube essentially to learn. But to be honest, after learning, I usually get distracted. That is my problem, personal problem, that I get distracted with other videos. What does this thing have in common? Um, the, the watching video and playing games, you are essentially receiving information, receiving, uh, I mean, you are consuming something developed by others. You are not doing the video, you are watching the video. You are not doing the game, you are playing the game. Uh, you are not uh, living your life, you are looking other people's life. So is maybe is the case that your computer is controlling you. You are not using the computer, the computer is using you. So we want to change that. Huh? It will be better that you control your computer, that you use your computer to create things. And in particular, we want to use computers to do science. What will we do here? So now I have a question that we said before. Um, what will we do in this course? Let me show you this. This is, I uh, took it a couple of weeks ago. It was in the, published in the New York Times, that is one of the biggest newspapers in the world. And they have this map, well, you say September 21. Uh, you can probably, this, this, is, this part, the COVID data is free. Uh, if you go to the, website of uh, the New York Times, you can see this thing. What you have here is um, a graphic and you have a map of a uh, situation in different parts of the world. And you have this table, what are the uh, numbers for every country? In some countries they have more detail. What do these three things have in common? Uh, this is the newspaper, and it's about COVID that I don't need to explain, but COVID is big, big, big thing, no? What they have in common? Well, these are all numbers presented as graphics. So journalists and scientists, in, in this case, because the journalists are reporting about science. And the science is about uh, communicating your result. The, the part that we are talking here is about communicating your result. So we will work with the, with table like this. This is real data that we will see later. Uh, this is a, in particular cases in Turkey. And we have a table like this. It's, it's longer, of course, but you have the date and the number of cases and the total number of cases and how many people died every day. And we will be able to make plot like this one. That is, this is real data for Turkey until... Oh. So you see, for example, uh, when we started the quarantine was uh, here when this is... Um, yeah, for example, this was the last day that I went to the university uh, before the quarantine last time. And if you see, it grow very, very quickly. And here in uh, April, mid April, things were very, very bad. This is Turkey, real data, official data. Then when the summer came, things improved. And the best time was here. Now uh, it is going up again. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to the university, it will be a risk for you and for, for uh, many people. By the way, you can zoom in eventually here if you want. Um, so we will learn how to do this plot. This is what we want to do here. You can download the plot and you can even see. Ah, here we can put this. Uh, this is September, you see. 
let's zoom out and you see the most recent case here are can we see them here no here anyway um, 1,000 new cases, 1,600 1, new cases every day. And every country has the same problem, by the way. Yeah? It's not something particular from Turkey, uh, but it's super important. You, you realize, I hope that you realize that you cannot handle COVID without understanding the numbers. And uh, computers are made to handling the numbers. In theory, you can do this without computers, but uh, computers make it much, much easier. That is what we want to do. We want to uh, do science with it. What we will not do here, what we will not do here, we will not teach you just to use Windows. Uh, I am assuming that you know how to use your computer. In particular, I don't have a good access. I have some access to Windows, but not very good. In this course, we don't teach programming. If, if we go fast, we can try, but, but it's not the main goal here. We will have enough without programming. We also don't teach bioinformatics here. There is another course of bioinformatics. Uh, in the second part, in the next semester, we may see something like a DNA or something like that, but it's not the central part here. We will do nothing about social media and we will not use Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Well, to be honest, we will use a little word. Uh, this week, we probably will use word like an introductory, but we essentially try to get away from Microsoft things. Uh, we will talk about later. So to finish this part, I want to show you uh, what is the, the point with computers. Do you have any question before we, we start this? Moment? Ask questions. Well, if you if you well ask questions, then later we will have uh, more ways to communicate. If you have questions after the class, and in particular, if you feel uncomfortable uh, speaking in English, we will find a solution for that also. Okay, how to use computers? So uh, there is a question: if computers are really improving the way we do things, um, some people say that computers are not necessarily making things better. In fact, there is a, 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 a point that. Uh, sometimes things are not working before better than before well this happened before around 100 years ago uh, maybe more i'm not very sure in the 100 but more than one century ago electrical engines were invented you know the industrial revolution started with a steam machine okay the, the thing working with the uh, vapor, uh, with the uh, steam, hot water, and uh, electric motors were invented later. So when the first factories were invented, they had only one big steam machine. I, 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 I visited, you know, uh, I, I unfortunately I don't have the good picture, but I visited an old factory and it's exactly like this. They had a one big machine making, uh, because it was very expensive, it has to be, you imagine it's like a locomotive of, of uh, a train. You remember trains, the old train have a big machine in the front and all the rest of the wagons have nothing. Uh, that is the idea of an old uh, on, uh, classic train, a big machine in the front pulling everything and the rest is being pulled. So the first factory has the same idea. This is kind of a big machine and then uh, the steam engine uh, working uh, for for uh, for all the factory. So how they do the energy movement? They have in the, in the roof they have these uh, metal rods, this axis, and they were all moved by the one steam machine. And with these belts, they were pulling the energy to every workstation. These belts move the energy. That's how factories worked in the 19th century. Okay, one motor for all machine. Okay, that, that was the given that you don't have any option because steam machine were very big and very expensive. When, when electric motors were 
invented, they didn't change radically. Uh, what people say, okay, we know how to do things. We took out the steam machine and we put an electric motor instead. What happened if you, if you replace the steam machine by an electrical motor, nothing happened. That was the disappointment. We invest a lot, we have new technology and nothing happened. Things didn't in, uh, improve because you are still using the same belt and the same, the, the rest of the system were the same. So when electrical motor were invented, they didn't have a good impact. And the same happened with computers that they didn't have initially the same impact. The real change happened when people realized that instead of having one big motor, you need to have many small motors in different parts of the, of the factory. So here you have, for example, this is the Ford company and they have a small motor here. And then, so instead of having one motor for everybody, you have every workstation with their own motor. In other words, you do things in a different way. That is what allows you to have a centrifuge, for example, or a hair dryer or a shaving machine or all the kind of motor, the, the, the dishwashing and the, you count the number of motors that you have at home. You don't have one big steam machine, you have many small motors. When you do things in a different way is when things change. So the change of technology is not a change, but it's not a successful by itself. If you do the same thing, even if you change the technology, they are not going to change. You have to really do things in a different way. So many people believe that computers are typewriters. You know, they think that this is the same old thing that we did in the 19th century, tak, 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 like my grandma did, tak, 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 tak. And the only thing that changed instead of paper, they have a screen. That is Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word this is 19th century technology with screens. It's a way to do paperwork. Uh, the same thing that people were doing in the 19th century, uh, they do first with handwritten calligraphy, then with the typewriter, tuck, 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 tuck. No, they do with Microsoft Word. That is not changing. If you do the same thing, you will not change. Computers are not typewriters. We need a new way to use computer. And that is what we want to teach here not how to use Word, not how to do the old thing with new machines, is to do something new. We want computer to do science. We are going to talk this uh, later again, but the essential point that science is the process of creating knowledge from experiment. Science is not about making experiments. Science is about, about knowledge. Experiments are a way to produce that knowledge, but they are not knowledge by itself. The knowledge came when you analyze the data. Now, producing data is cheaper and cheaper. 50 years ago, if you were a molecular biologist, you had a lot of work to do. And it took a lot of effort. And that people educated 50 years ago believe that doing the experiment is enough. But today you have robots that do microarray sequencing or pipetting. So producing the data is cheaper and cheaper. Understanding the data is the hard part. And the first idea that I want to give you today to understand the data, we need to put structure in the data. Structure that we are going to use here are essentially three kind of uh, structures. I mean, in, in molecular biology, these are the three kinds of structures that we care. Tables, that are typically the result of your experiment. Hierarchies, for example, phylogenetic trees, for example, it's a way to organize the information. And networks, like metabolic network or regulatory networks. These are essentially the three structures that we look here. In this course, we are probably mostly working with tables and a little with hierarchies. So, Structure will happen in two parts. First, we were going to talk about structuring documents. And the key word here is markdown. I will give you a lot of online material that you can follow. Then we will do about structuring data. 
uh, for that we are going to use R and R Studio. And in particular, we are going to use a library that I never used it before. I am going to learn when I teach. Um, it's tidyverse. You can, there's an old keyword that you can Google later. And uh, the other change between, before, uh, with respect to the previous course is that we are going to use a, a structure for, for a plot, for graphic, that's called the grammar of graphic. These are the modern ways to do these things, okay? Questions? Okay, so uh, I have something else to show you. Um, by the way, uh, you will find later, I, I made a video of this class. And in the video, uh, uh, the, the, the online version of this take like 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And we have been here for one hour. So really when I do the video alone, it's much faster. You, you will save time. It takes me a lot of time to make the video, you know, because I had to edit. But for you, it will be much more efficient. Uh, ah, good question. So I never had the problem with that. Okay. Uh, to me, attendance is that you do the homework. That is the, the thing. Since we are going to be offline. So uh, at the end, the point is this. We have... Um, we will have everything on video, so you can watch it later. And we will have many ways to talk online. So sitting in front of the computer with me is not the essential part. The essential part is that you watch the videos and uh, that you do the homework. That is attendance, okay? So attendance is important, but attendance is not sitting in front of the computer. That is a good answer, Seinep. Of course, I uh, there, of course, there is attendance. We say that there is attendance. Attendance uh, today. Uh, we are going to take. And we are going to take attendance now. Go to the. Uh, uh, let's see. Let Let me see if I can do this thing. View. Um, um, this one. Okay. So I'm going to open this window if uh, there is no code right. Okay, this is the uh, course web page. And right now your work uh, will be this. Um, take a look here. This is a blah, blah, blah introduction. And uh, there are two things that we're going to do today. And this is the classes that I expect to do today. We only did the first. I say class one, two, three, but they're not necessarily in different days. You know, This is what I want to show today. Uh, so the slides uh, are here. Um, eventually, I, if I find something, I can change the slide and I will update later. But you can find them here and in the system. Uh, uh, this is not very correct, but I will fix this later. Right now, what, what you should do is this. You click into Google Group. I am going to do for me, and uh, I hope that you do also the same thing. You click in this, go into Google Groups, and you will see, hopefully, something like this. Now, right now, I am uh, with this account, with my uh, professor account. I am not a member of this group, so I will ask to join the group. And you should do the same, okay? You go to the homepage. Let, let's do let's do it. Yavash, uh, one second. Yavash, yavash. So first, this is the the address, okay? You open. You probably tell me if you if you have any problem opening this page. Okay. Ah, people are doing good. I am starting to get messages with work. So this is the course uh, homepage. And uh, then we have here the going to the group. And I will start getting your uh, request that I'm going to. Uh, and here you have to ask to join the group. Please, uh, here I want to show you something. If you have an Google account, you can connect them and you will have the name and the picture. Uh, I, I like this. If you don't have a Google, if you're not connected with your Google account, you can write your name here. Please write your name, full name, so we can know. Because if you say Ali, uh, for example, I see Atakan, but 
there may be more than one attacker. Uh, try to use your full name. You probably want to get every new message. And uh, in the reason for joining, you can put your student number. I don't have a student number, but. Um, and ask to join. If you already did, uh, not a big deal, okay? So, um, So I, I let you do that uh, and uh, we have a break while you feel this, okay? Fine?